right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us here today. My name is Esteban Garcia, and I'm staff with NAMI Delaware. And today we have Nikki Gonzalez, the director from Code Purple, Sussex County, joining us today. Um, Nikki, would you like to say a few words to introduce yourself to anybody that's watching? Hi, I'm Nikki, and I've been the director of Code Purple for the last six years. This is our seventh winter and we're excited in spite of the um, kind of weird world we're living in right now. So um, yeah, we're gonna get this done this year and thank you for having me on and um, getting the word out. Yeah, of course, thank you for joining us here. Um, so just for anybody that isn't aware, can you tell us a little bit uh, about Code Purple? You know, what is Code Purple and, and what is it that you guys do? Well, Code Purple is a collaborative effort of churches and volunteers in the community. And we house our um, people experiencing homelessness in our community. We house them at different churches, different locations. Um, and then we have wonderful volunteers from the community come in and stay overnight with them. Uh, we usually have dinners and to-go food and toiletries and stuff like that. Um, and they get to come in out of the cold and have a warm place to sleep each night. Um, we're open from Mar uh, December 1st through March 15th at all of our locations, except for um, Laurel. They open January 1st. So we currently have six locations. We have two in Milford, one for men, one for women. We have one in Georgetown for men. We have two in Seaford, one for men, one for women. And we have one in Laurel for men. We do have Troop 7. We can confirm that we will be there, but we're still in the planning process for that. So we're not exactly sure um, the specifics yet. So we're going to announce those as they come. All right. That sounds like there's a lot going on and it's, yeah. it sounds uh, <laughs> like you guys do a lot for the community. So that, that's great to hear. Yeah. Right. And um, you mentioned, you know, the weird, weird world that we're in today. And yeah. so, of course, with the pandemic going on, COVID-19 has affected many places and many people in the world in various different ways. So can you tell us how has COVID-19 affected the Code Purple, Code Purple and your efforts? Yes. We, um, you know, besides the little things with the whole cleaning and mask and um, spacing people out, um, we aren't having dinner style, like sit down dinners. We'll have alternatives to that, um, but no like community style dinners. Um, but the biggest impact it has uh, had on us is our volunteer base. Um, we have a lot of elderly who help because they're retired, they don't have to get up the next day for work. Um, and so that has limited them. Obviously they're not gonna come and volunteer because they're you know, in the group that's more at risk. Um, so we really need a younger uh, population to step up and help. And we would like um, two overnight volunteers for each shelter, um, but we definitely need one um, to open. So, you know, that's just seven people per shelter um, in order to open. That's not too many people. And there's lots of people in towns um, that could probably step up, but you know, there may be a fear factor for some people, um, but we definitely don't want the fear factor to be the COVID because we're doing everything we can to provide, you know, safety from um, anybody getting infected. We have protocols in place. We have alternative places for someone to go if they were to be sick. Those types of things are are definitely per CDC recommendations being done. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds. Uh. You know, safety, of course, is a major yes. factor. Number one. Yeah. So you might have already answered this question, but I'll add to it as well. So, what does Code Purple need the most right now? And is there, aside from the big ones, any smaller things that people can do to support Code Purple? Yes, right now, um, most we need is volunteers, like I just said. We need volunteers to come and spend the night. That's our biggest need. We also have intake spots. We also have to-go bags that people are making up that we need to send each morning. And, of course, our donations of, like, socks and, um, you know, toiletries, all those things, which all can be found on our website. Um, we try to keep it up to date and current with all the – new openings, times, addresses. Um, we have a donation page where you can drop off donations, all those types of things. 
um, a donation list. You know, you have to think about if you didn't have a kitchen. So like pop top cans, um, you know, water bottles, juice bottles, um, to go container things, not just like a big pack of something or a big jar of applesauce, but those little mini ones, individual servings, stuff like that. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so there's, there's a few ways that people can help. And, yes. um, I know you mentioned that the number one need is volunteers. And I know you mentioned December 1st is your opening day, which is yeah. right around the corner from uh, this, this video yeah. or the summer recording for anyone's watching it future yeah. wise. Um, so now how does someone sign up to volunteer? So they can go to our website, com, And there is a page that says sign up calendars and they can click on that it will take you to links to individual towns so for the milford shelters you'll click on the milford link it will take you to sign up calendar and you can sign up for any day you want that's open you can sign up for any intake uh, or overnight is on there this year and um you know or you can call 302-956-6006 and we can answer your questions if you have questions first um, we have a volunteer page on Facebook. So if you like our Code Purple page, we can um, put you on the volunteer page. And that has like training information and those things. So we won't just throw you in there cold turkey. We will train you. Somebody will meet you there. Um, I We're going to try to do a Zoom training this Saturday at 2 o'clock. So um, be on the lookout for that. That's on. Uh, that'll be announced on Facebook as well today. Okay, so there's three different ways really that you can make contact to volunteer the the number that you provided, the website, and the Facebook page. Yes, we right. and everything is Code Purple Sussex County. So, Code Purple Sussex County. So you type that in one of the search bars, it'll yeah. come, up. come up. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, do you have any other information you think people might? Um, want to know as far as Code Purple goes or uh, just any parting words? Yeah. Um, you know, this is very important for our guys who are out on the street. Uh, we serve usually chronically homeless people and sometimes we're their only respite for the night, their only warmth for the night. And we want to pour into people. We're low barrier. So that means there, you know, there's not a lot of things to jump through to get to us a little bit more this year because we had to have people sign up, but you know, we want to be there for those in need and we cannot do it without the help of the community. There's not enough of us on the board. There's only like six of us to cover everything that we need covered. So this is not just to help us. This is to help someone who has nothing. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so for anybody that's looking to volunteer or can volunteer a night or two, some of your time, please visit uh, CodePurpleSussexCounty.com and volunteer if you can support our roofless neighbors. Um, you can also visit the Facebook, um, which is their Facebook page, which is Code Purple Sussex County, or you can call 302-959-6006. It's 959-006. I'm sorry, 956? Yeah, sorry. Okay, so it's 956-006. There you go. So, um, yeah, please, if you can, um, consider doing that. There's a lot of people in need. And um, Nikki, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you doing that. And um, I hope we can help your efforts. And thank you for your service to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. It's been a pleasure.